This is how we built an above ground combination filtration pond. This is our current above ground pond. It is a 100 gallon stock tank. A stock tank is a large animal watering trough. We're about to break it down so we can rebuild it as a combination filtration pond. This combination pond will have both a biological and a mechanical filtration system. A biological system consists of floating plants whose roots filter the water by absorbing fish waste as food and bioballs which provide a surface for bacteria to cling to. Healthy bacteria also absorbs fish waste as food. A mechanical filter with an ultraviolet light removes particles and helps control algae. We are taking on this project for two reasons. One, because we have had a serious algae bloom and we don't want to control it with chemicals. And two, because our fish have now outgrown the current 100 gallon tank. At the end of this demonstration, if you're interested in building your own pond, I will list the supplies that we used. The first step was to break down the current pond because we will be putting the larger pond in the same location. After removing the 100 gallon tank, we expanded the existing hole to accommodate a larger 300 gallon stock tank. As we set the stock tank into the hole, we did our best to level the pond. However, what we discovered is that the tank will actually flex when filled with water, so the end result is that our water level is off by about a half to one inch. But you might want to take this into consideration before beginning. We expanded the hole we dug so there would be a trench to the mechanical filter. For the piping, we utilized the existing drain hole in the new stock tank. Now that we had our location prepared, it was on to step two. The second step was to pump water from the pond to the filter. We used flexible hose because the PVC pipe would have been rigid and that would have made cleaning the pump difficult. The hose was one and a quarter inch reinforced flexible tubing which required heating so it would stretch over the fitting. From there we measured the distance from the pump to the drain hole, cut the pipe and glued the pieces together. On the exterior side of the tank, we started by removing the drain plug and installing a threaded PVC connector into the drain hole. We added a short piece of PVC so the piping would clear the side of the tank. Then we added a 90 degree connector to turn toward the mechanical filter. We then added a brass check valve which will prevent the upper tank from draining back into the lower tank and overflowing in the event of a power outage. From there, we extended the pipe to reach the mechanical filter. We had to go far enough to clear the raised flower bed and decorative brick that will surround the finished pond. Then we turned the pipe toward the filter, added a cutoff valve and another connector to attach reinforced flexible hose to the input fitting on the filter. Again, we used flexible hose because the PVC pipe is rigid and that would have made cleaning the filter impossible as that requires removing the lid on the filter. We dug a hole to sink the filter so it would be hidden from view with a few landscaping tricks. We added a small amount of water to the pond and checked that both the pump and the filter were functioning properly. We also checked for leaks before covering the piping with dirt. Okay, so now that we have supplied water to the filter, we're on to the third step. The third step is to send the filtered water to the upper tank. Again, the filter removes particles and the UV light helps to control algae. The upper tank will house floating plants and the roots of those plants will absorb the dissolved fish waste as plant food. Since we plan to utilize the existing drain hole for draining the pond when needed, we had to add an additional hole to the stock tank. For this, we used a two inch hole saw to accommodate a drain plug. We used leftover bricks to raise the upper tank to provide clearance for the waterfall feature. Step four is a waterfall feature that will cycle the water back into the lower pond. We took a cheap dustpan and cut the handle off of it to make a waterfall. We cut a hole in the side of the upper tank facing the lower tank. As carefully as possible, we marked the tank to accommodate the dustpan, then used a jigsaw to cut. We wedged the dustpan into the hole. At this point, I'm going to stop and tell you that we tried many over-the-counter products to adhere and seal the dustpan to the tank. The first few products we tried didn't adhere to the plastic tank or didn't seal the hole, so we had leaks. In the end, the product that finally worked is called 3M Marine Adhesive. It's similar to silicone, but it has to cure over a 24-hour period. Once the waterfall was installed and cured, we returned to step three to run water from the filter to the upper tank. We added a shutoff valve and a PVC pipe to the flexible hose. You'll notice that we utilized 45 degree turns. 
We did this for two reasons. One, because we didn't want the pipe to extend way out into the yard, and two, because 90 degree turns will reduce water flow through the pipe. We put clay pots inside the upper tank to set grading on, and the grading will support the few potted plants we're planning to add. Also, under the grading is where we place the bags of bio balls. Ta-da! Everything worked, and the water had been treated for more than 24 hours, so we moved the fish and plants from their temporary barrels into their new home. During all of this, we did not lose a single fish. The final step was to fill the trenches, place the decorative bricks surrounding both tanks for the raised flower bed that surrounds the pond, return the dirt we had removed plus add additional topsoil, replant the plants, and add a few ornamental decorations. In this picture, you might notice the two plastic pots turned upside down with holes cut in the sides. These pots are there for the spitters to sit on and as man-made caves for the fish to hide under. Later, we added a T to the PVC pipe to feed water to the spitters because a smaller pump was not maintaining an adequate water flow. And now you'll see, because we've had a pond for years, the frogs were back as soon as we were finished with construction and out of their way. Here is our pond at the end of the summer, six months later, when everything is growing at its full potential. And here is our pond at night with the addition of pond lights for after dark viewing. The list of supplies that we used include a 300 gallon stock tank, a 100 gallon stock tank, 20 feet of inch and a quarter PVC pipe, six foot of reinforced flexible hose, six hose clamps, two one and a quarter inch cut off ball valves, various PVC connectors, PVC cleaner and PVC glue, a filter and pump combination kit, a cheap dustpan, water plants, water plant fertilizer, landscaping bricks, dirt, plants, supporting bricks, the 3M marine adhesive, bio balls, clay pots, and plastic mesh as a separator. And the tools that we used included a shovel, saw, a drill, with a two inch hole saw, a flat tip screwdriver, tape measure, and a level.